Hey guys, you know I've been starting several of my videos with tomatoes, but it is the season. However, we are actually not going to do anything with tomatoes other than wash them and get them in the freezer. Because today I have a whole bunch of apples that need to get processed first. Because tomatoes can go in the freezer, apples really can't if you're planning to make something besides just frozen apple slices because it doesn't hold up very well in the freezer. Tomatoes, I don't care if they hold up. So they can go in the freezer, apples need to be processed. So how this happened is I, I'm on a local uh, Facebook group and somebody posted on there that they have a big apple tree and they are not going to do anything with apples this year. So come pick them for free. So I was like, why not? So I went and actually David came with me and carried things for me. And I picked a big tub. I actually don't know how much it weighs, but it's pretty heavy. I'm guessing maybe 30, 25, 30 pounds-ish. Um, yeah, so they are here now and they are definitely getting, um, some of them are mushy and stuff. So I do need to get them processed right away. So just gonna get these tomatoes taken care of and then we will go outside and get the apples all washed up. We'll see you in a minute. So we are outside and we are, as you saw, getting the apples in some water to get them washed up and I'm going to probably take off all of the um, stems. I'm going to be running these through the food mills for the most part or the juicer. Hi Madeline. She's very interested in what's happening in the bin. This is that. This is that. Anyway, so um, and either of them could handle those but it just makes it easier. Um, and then I've got several that like have leaves and stuff on them. So I want to get all of those taken care of. Um, like I said, also, there are definitely some that are soft, although I really didn't notice any bug damage at all. And they said that they hadn't sprayed with anything. So um, they're basically organic apples, which is fantastic for free. They are really small, however, and I might attempt peeling and coring some, but like the core on my cores is really big. So it would take up like this much of the apple. So I don't think it's worth it to try and do anything with them that involves um, apples, like apple slices or anything. So I think what I'm gonna do for the most part is make applesauce and then I'll juice the rest of them and we will, wow, the sun just came out behind the cloud and we will, um, maybe do some hard cider. I haven't done that in a couple years. So anyway, this is all full of water now, as you can see. So let's get to washing. Charlie, you can go inside. No, no. just dawned on me I should probably have a bucket or something to put these in after they're clean and destemmed. So I will go get one of those. Decided I'm gonna do just a bowl because I actually do want to get a weight on how many how much I got. Uh, so I'd like to weigh them but my person size scale is broken and my kitchen scale only weighs up to 22 pounds. So I could not weigh them all at once anyway. Oh yeah, this one's all mushy. Although the rest of it is pretty good. So I probably will keep this one and just cut this bad spot out before I send it through. This is probably going to take a while. And this was not on my list yet for this time of year. I definitely wanted to do something with apples, but I really was not ready 
So I was planning to do tomatoes today, as you might have guessed. So thankfully, like I said, they can wait. Apples cannot. They were free. I'm going to use them. We are weighing each bowl, like I said. So the first one was almost nine pounds, including the bowl. This one is just over nine pounds. And what I thought I was gonna, I'm going to do is um, I have one load in the sink, just sitting there, ready to go. And then this one, I was thinking I should just get them started cooking down. So I'm gonna bring this one in and get them chopped up and into a pot to start cooking down. So let's go do that now. This pot may be overkill, but I figure it's better to start with a pot that is too big than too small and then you've dirtied two pots. Like I said, I'm going to start um, just chopping these, probably most of them I'm just going to chop in half and toss them into this pot with a little water in the bottom and get them started heating up. The reason I'm doing this and I'm not seeding them or anything is to get them through my food mill, they have to be soft. so. They don't have to be like completely mush, but they need to be pretty soft. So um, that's why I'm getting them cooking down. You know, it just dawned on me that I haven't actually tasted these. So I think I maybe should do that. They might be terrible. Hmm. Yeah, they definitely need to be used. They're kind of mealy, but good flavor. A little tart. So it'll be good. major bad spots that I see, I am going to cut those out. But if it's just mild bruising, I'm not going to worry about it. I'd like to get like 12 to 16 pints of applesauce. I have one left from last year and I think I only made maybe six, six or eight pints last year. And I've been hoarding that last pint. Do you guys do that? Where you're like down to your last couple and so you you like don't want to eat them because then they'll all be gone it's so silly but i totally do it i will just get all of these apples chopped up and in here and then we'll head back outside and start finish cleaning up the rest of them Last three, I am very pleasantly surprised that there really wasn't too much waste. One of the things that can happen with apples is the apple can look totally pristine on the outside, but then the inside has buggies in them well, eggs really. And what happens is they, um, if you don't spray your apples, and there are organic options for spraying fruit trees, 
But if you don't spray them right as their blossoms are ending, then the bugs that have laid eggs in the blossoms, those eggs are now inside of the apple and they just stay there basically until they are ready to come out. And then, then there would be a hole, but you can look at an apple and it can be totally perfect. So this is why I cut in half every single apple because there are, as you can see, it's a, it's a decent amount, but considering how much is in the pot, let me just show you. Yeah, so this pot, which is quite large, is almost full. So I think we have plenty for applesauce and the rest will get juiced. I'm gonna get a big stir and give these a stir and then we'll go back outside and finish washing up apples. Oh, and I should add too that I did put some um, lemon juice in this just to help with browning so they don't get super brown. Down to my last couple apples here. It is a really good thing that I did this today because especially as I got towards where the apples were on the bottom, I was running across ones that were either completely rotten or mostly rotten. Um, I mean, like completely brown like this, but the whole thing was brown. So, I would have lost quite a bit of them if I had not gotten on this today. One of the other things I thought about as I was doing this, and surprised that I didn't see this on anybody's lists about how to preserve apples, but there's this thing called boiled cider that you can do. And it is delicious. I'm not gonna make any because I actually still have some from last year. But if you have the chance and you have a excess of apple juice that you don't know what to do with, just boil it down until it is the consistency of a thick syrup. It is the most delicious thing. I, it's, I can't even describe what it tastes like it's kind of caramely, but it's got the tartness of apples. I mean, it is like an apple distilled down to its perfect flavor. So it's great to use any time you're making an apple dessert or drizzle it over your apple pie before you bake it. Just gives that really, really intense apple flavor to anything you put it in. So that is another option. I'm not doing it, but that is another option. All right, I'm gonna get this water dumped out here and oh let's weigh this last one let's see what we ended up with total so that one is 9.8 yeah zero eight okay so 10 20 30 so actually it ended up being closer to like 50 pounds. Wow, I don't know how much the bowl weighs, but I mean, it's maybe a half a pound, if that. So um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so maybe 45 pounds. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's pretty good. And that doesn't include, well, that does include some of the bad stuff that I had already weighed and put in the sink than when I was cutting them. Um, I had to toss them, but still, it's a lot of apples. Um, I will, even though I'm gonna juice all of these that I just uh, washed up, I will still cut them all in half, even though most of them are easily small enough to go into my juicer hole. Um, as you saw, it they can be buggy inside and you won't, you can't tell it from the outside at all. So I will have to cut them all in half. I think my, um, apples that are on the stove are actually ready to go through the food mill. 
So I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and we'll go inside and finish up with the applesauce. Had a little lunch break and the apples are still pretty hot, but um, I, I don't wanna get started on juicing the other apples yet because I have an interview in about 45 minutes and then I have an appointment about an hour away. So I think I'm gonna have to do that after I get back from my appointment. So we'll just be really careful and get the uh, apple, these apples through for the applesauce. Let me just put this away really quick. And let me just show you my setup here. So once again, KitchenAid to the rescue. This is, so actually it's the grinder attachment again. So it's basically two attachments. And I just wanna say, I, I've been collecting these since I graduated from college, which was a very long time ago. So I know they're expensive. Um, and I, it's just, it's taken me a long time to get these. So I don't think that I just can go out and buy all these attachments. And I understand that not everybody can. So anyway, back to this. So I have the grinder and then you have the strainer attachment on it. The, um, I'm just using the waste bucket from the juicer, which actually is sitting right here waiting for that. So I'm just gonna use it for the waste, which will come out here. And then all of the good stuff will drop into, oops, sorry, drop into this bowl here. All right, let's get started and see how far we can get. I just think we should be able to get through all of it in 45 minutes, I would hope. I am so going to go get an apron and put it on. <laughs> this isn't terribly, terribly messy, but it does splatter. So it's a good idea to wear an apron. Let's see if this actually works or not. All finished with running this through a second time. And you can even tell just looking in here how much less waste there is now. And we did get, well, let me scrape this off really quick here, some very, very thick applesauce from it. Not a ton, but I think honestly, definitely worth doing, running it through again. This didn't take very much time. And got a good amount, several cups, I would say, worth of applesauce. It's super, super thick too, which is great. So I'm gonna add this to the stuff that's on the stove. And actually I was stirring up the stuff on the stove and I don't think I do need to cook it down. It's pretty thick right now as it is. And I think adding this um, will just help that too. Um, so I am gonna add this and let's see what it looks like and then we'll decide if it needs to cook down.
And you can see how thick just the, the stuff that wasn't the run through twice one. So yeah, I really don't think that this needs to go again. There is a little seed in here. The strainer's pretty good, but you do occasionally come across stuff it didn't catch. And the thing about it is I would be worried about the bottom scorching if I did try to cook this down anymore. So I will need to heat it back up to get it into jars and stuff, but I actually need to leave here in about 15 minutes uh, for my appointment. So as with the <laughs> juicing apples, this is going to wait until I get back. I'll just put the lid on and then um, when I come back, heat it up. I will probably add a little bit of sugar um, and some cinnamon. Um, actually, let me take a quick taste test. Mm. Actually, I don't think it needs sugar, but definitely I wanna have some cinnamon in it. Yeah, that's really good. Wow. I'm impressed. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny. I have no idea what kind of apples these are. I didn't think to ask the people. Uh, and David even asked me uh, on our way there, he's like, what kind of apples are these? And I was like, oh, I have no idea. They're free. They're the free kind. <laughs> and, uh, and even though he had asked me right before we got there, I still forgot to ask. So no clue what kind of apples these are, but this applesauce is very tasty. All right, so I'm gonna head to my appointment now and I'll be back probably um, and after dinner, we will get back at this, but we are definitely going to get this done today because I need to do to make tomatoes tomorrow. All right. See you soon. All right, guys, I am back from my appointment, had some dinner. Now we are going to get back to it. So I'm going to just get this cleaned up. and then get the juicer set up. I still need to cut all the apples in half, so I'll get that done. And then I also have the canner uh, heating up with water and I have the jars in there, had them all in the dishwasher uh, so they're nice and clean. And now we'll just get them heated up. And then I have the applesauce very, very slowly heating back up as well. So I think we are in good stead to get started and I will see you back here when I start actually juicing. First bowl are ready to go. I need to get something to catch the juice. Now this thing is incredibly noisy, like ridiculously noisy. So I will run you through a couple and so you can see what it looks like, but you know, it's, it's just a standard juicer. The waste is gonna go here and the juice will go here. Um, I might run the waste through again, like I did with the food mill. Uh, depends upon how much I feel like continuing on <laughs> after I get all of these. And then my plan is to, I'm gonna put the juice in these half gallon jars and I am going to do a wild ferment, which I have never done with my apple cider. But I figure my end product is going to be real apple cider vinegar. So not the stuff made with apple scraps, which is totally fine to do, but it's not a true apple cider vinegar. So I wanna make apple cider, let it ferment, becomes hard cider, and then there's maybe another step or two in between. I haven't looked that up yet, but I will. And uh, eventually it becomes apple cider vinegar. So that's my plan. And I figure that even if, so, okay, let me back up. One of the reasons that you would not do a wild ferment for your hard apple cider is that you never know what strain of bacterias are going to get in there and cause the fermentation. So it could either come out really great or it could come out really funky tasting. Not bad, like not like, not like it's gone bad, just funky tasting. And you have zero control over that when you do a wild ferment. So like I said, I've always done, I've always killed all of the wild yeast and then put in my own brewer's yeast, but it doesn't really matter 
if this ends up tasting funky because it's going to become uh, vinegar. So it doesn't, I don't care. It'll be interesting to see what it does end up tasting like, but if it tastes funky, it's fine. Coming vinegar. So that's my plan. I'm going to get started juicing. Uh, and of course, I have it all backwards. The buttons to run it are over here. All right. There we go. Yeah, that's it. Basically, it just comes out here, and we have the beginnings of apple cider. I won't subject you to all of the rest of these and that noise. So I'll put you on a time lapse. Because this is a just a home uh, juicer, it's really not meant to do this amount of apples all at one time. So it gets all like gunked up in the lid. So I just have to clean it out every once in a while. But I am finished with this bowl of apples, so we can give the machine a break and chop up the next batch. I think probably I'll only, well, no, I'm going to have two more bowls full, which I'm kind of surprised because I already have a half gallon. I might skim that foam off the top. Though it has lots of yummy stuff in it, so um, but yeah, that's, I'm kind of surprised that I'm getting that much juice out of it. Under there. All right, I'm going to go chop up the next batch. I got, um, yeah, not quite a gallon and a half of juice, but you can see that this is where the juice actually starts, and this is all just foam. So I am gonna strain it, um, all of these. There's still a little bit left in this one because I couldn't fit it. So um, I'll just get all of this uh, foam off. And basically, I mean, you could leave it. It would be fine, I have in the past. Uh, but that's usually when I'm mixing this in a big five gallon uh, tub or bucket and um, it gets mixed in fairly easily. But in these guys, it's gonna be kind of difficult. So I'm just gonna strain it off. And the reality is it's just, it's basically solids that are going to end up at the bottom of the jar eventually. And uh, you're, you're still gonna strain them out. So might as well do it now. Well, hopefully, I'm not sure how difficult this will be. <laughs> Oh, this is just not a good idea at all. All right, we are going to strain this into a bowl where I can use both of my hands. All right, let's see if this works a little bit better. Nope, I knew that was gonna happen too. <laughs> uh, the realities of my kitchen. This is the reality. This is usually what my kitchen looks like. All right, I'm gonna get a different strainer. 
Let me try and dirty every dish in my kitchen. All right, I think this one will do better because it's got the two things. Well, let's try again. these out actually I'm gonna see if I can scrape some of this out because what I'm going to do is um, put keep this in put it all back in this strainer over a bowl and let it sit in the fridge overnight because I think that there's still probably quite a bit of liquid in this and I'd like to save it as if I can but then I'll rinse these out before I pour the juice back in One of the other things I did not mention, but is very important in making cider, is that unlike canning, oh, I'm gonna make a whole mess. Unlike canning, you, um, where your jars get sterilized because you process them for more than 10 minutes, you don't process the, this in heat, typically. You could if you wanted to pasteurize it, but, um, so everything that you, are working with needs to be sterile. And I did run, or sterilized, yeah. So I did run this through the um, sterilization uh, thing in the dishwasher, These all of these jars, so they are all good to go. I lied, we actually got almost exactly a gallon and a half. All right, I just wanna show you. This is typically what it looks like after you have juiced that many apples in your kitchen. So be prepared for a mess to clean up. So yeah, while well, you saw me do that, and there's all of this, lots of seeds, all of this. This guy is splattered all over the place. I'm sure there's stuff back here too. Oh yeah, yeah, I need to clean my canisters and yeah. So all of that. I did wanna just mention too that uh, I decided not to run the, the scraps that have gone in here back through because I just didn't want to. <laughs> uh, although I will say that, um, let me see if I can get this off and show you. you can see that, I mean, there's still like whole pieces of apple in here with lots of pulp left. So you easily could run this back through and probably get another quart or so of juice. But the other thing that I have done with this when other times when I haven't wanted to uh, run it back through again, because it's, it's kind of a pain to run it through again. Um, but the other thing I've done is just dump it all in a pot and heat it up until the chunks that are still sizable are kind of are mushy, put it through the food mill, and then I uh, make it into, usually I've made it into apple butter. Uh, cause the nice thing is by that point, it's really, really, most of the liquid is out of it. So you don't have to cook it down quite as far, which is really nice. And it means you're using like 90% of the apple, which is kind of cool. However, I have a ton of apple butter downstairs, so I am not going to do that either. Anyway, um, so I'm gonna clean this up, and then the, let's see, I'll show you, the applesauce is nice and warm. You can see it is bubbling up here. So we will get this jarred up and in the canner. Oh, wait, I didn't tell you what we're doing with these guys. Uh, so I'm just going to, oh, these flies, terrible things. I'm going to wipe the rims off a little bit here 
and just put lids on them very loosely. And we're just gonna let them set out here on the counter out of direct sunlight, but uh, let them set here and start fermenting. And typically it's about three, four days. You'll start seeing the bubbles in here. And then I have to decide. So I do have a carboy, but it's five gallons. And that seems a little excessive to put a gallon and a half in five gallon container to be able to put an airlock on it. But you really do need to put an airlock on it for its um, next fermentation process. So I probably need to get one of those out and get it cleaned up and do all that. But that's, like I said, three or four days down the road. This needs to just sit here and do its thing. So it's gonna be fun. I'm excited to see how this works. Um, but beyond even the three to four days. So after that, it'll go into the carboy with an airlock on it. And that basically just prevents anything from getting in to the liquid, into the juice while it's fermenting, but allows the air to get out. So basically it kind of almost creates a little bit of a vacuum in the carboy. Um, and that it'll sit in there until it stops bubbling. And that can take anywhere from, it depends how much sugar is in your fruit. Uh, but so that can take anywhere from a week to two or three weeks. It just really depends on your fruit. And since I'm using a wild yeast, I, I really don't know how long it's going to take. So it'll be interesting. I, like I said, I'm really excited. And then once it does that, we will put it into bottles. And I, that's what I have to look up is kind of that next step after it's turned into hard cider, what you do with it to turn it into um, vinegar. And I think you just leave it open to the air, like covered with cheesecloth or something. Um, so we'll just have to see. Uh, I will... I will keep you updated on this little project. Looking up uh, applesauce to know how long we need to can it for and how much headspace. I'm guessing a half an inch, but we are gonna make sure. Apple butter, applesauce, 180. Applesauce. All righty. Right, yep, half an inch headspace, and then both process both pint and quart jars for 20 minutes. Remove counter lid, wait five minutes, and remove jars. All right, so, um, so that means what? What does that mean? 20 minutes, so we need to process for 30 minutes. Let's get some jars filled. I will get them out of the canner. They've just been sitting in the rack above the water, uh, staying nice and toasty. And I'll bring apple sauce over here and we'll get filling. Actually, I did just look this up one more time because I, right as I was closing it, I was like, oh, wait a minute, it had lemon juice on there. So I wanted to make sure if it was just for preserving color or if it was actually for acid. And it is actually for acid. So it calls for four tablespoons of lemon juice for 12 pounds of apples. We did about 17 pounds of apples, which is not a double recipe. It's, kind of, it's almost one and a half recipes. I added about two tablespoons when I first put it in the pot, mm, but that was before we ran it through the food mill. So you know what? I'm just, I'm going to put six tablespoons of lemon juice in here just to be on the safe side. I think I have six tablespoons of lemon juice. And you do need to use bottled lemon juice when you're doing recipes when you're adding acid for maintaining the correct acidity level, you need to use bottles. You can't use fresh. If it's just for flavor or like to keep the color good, I think that was three. I should count. Four, five, six. All right. So back to what I was saying. If you're using 
lemon juice or lime juice just for flavoring or to maintain color, then you can use fresh. But otherwise you do definitely need to use bottles because that's the only way you know for sure that the acid level is, um, because they are required to have a certain acid level in a bottled juice, it is actually monitored. So, but, but fresh lemons and limes, you never know what the acidity is when you're picked, all that kind of thing. So that's why, where did I put my lid? And then I also just remembered I wanted to add some more sugar to this. Hmm. Yeah, mm, that's good. All right, I'm not gonna add any more sugar. And I think the cinnamon is right on point. So let's get some jars going. Now, you know the drill, we just clean off the rims. These are all new, so they shouldn't have any chips, but I'm still gonna check. You never know. All right, let's get some lids on these guys. Like I said, I'm just gonna check them real quick, make sure there's nothing obvious. The other thing that can happen is, like this one actually does, have a little bit of a uh, dent right here. It's not enough that I'm concerned about it, but if it was any more than that, I would be. However, if that one doesn't seal, we'll know why. Now this recipe, says that it's for the 12 pounds, it makes eight pints. This is eight pints and I've gone through about half of it. So I think we're gonna get more than 16. Well, I only did a recipe and a half, technically, pound wise. So yeah, we're definitely gonna get double that. And you just want them fingertip tight. And we will get these in the canner and get them started. Got a good couple of inches of water above that. So we're just gonna put the lid on, turn this up to high and as soon as it comes to a boil, we will set a timer for 30 minutes. And then they'll come out and we'll do the next batch. So the funny thing is, David said to me, he, he just came through uh, to get a little snack. He's like, so is this gonna be another midnight, one o'clock night? I'm like, no, it'll be fine. It's nine. <laughs> I have at least after this one, 30 minutes, and then another 30 minutes, plus the time in between to like let it come down to temperature a little bit, and I probably actually have three processing things to do, so. But you know what, at least in the 30 minutes in between, I can like sit and relax. So that's what I'm gonna do. It is 10.15, so not quite midnight, and I have seven more jars of the applesauce in the canner that will need to go for 30 minutes as soon as it starts boiling. So, not midnight. <laughs> anyway, I did just wanna show you too, be careful with this. You can see the separation already happening. 
I actually haven't seen this before where it has the top band, but eventually all of this will come down here and this will all be the juice. I mean, there will still be juice in here for sure. And this will continue settling as well. But that is what cider looks like when you let it set. So we have, oh, what is seven plus eight? 15. 15 jars of applesauce, which is great. I forgot to put some vinegar in my canner, so these are all going to be cloudy because of our hard water. I put vinegar in now, so it should be good. And we have um, almost a gallon and a half of cider that's gonna turn into apple cider vinegar. So I think we did good today, and I'm excited to have more applesauce on the shelf so I can quit hoarding my last little lonely jar downstairs. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed spending some time with me today and I will see you next time. Have a great night.